Robin, look out! The cry came from close behind him, and he dropped to the ground, rolling to his left and coming up in one fluid motion, ready for the attack he knew would come. Ha! Nice move! The man was laughing, but a meaty hand swung round viciously, aiming for Robin's neck. He swayed backwards, feeling the massive fist of the miller brushing his shoulder, and, adrenaline coursing through his veins, lunged forward, arms outstretched. He caught the heavier, older man round the midriff, his momentum taking them both to the ground. Robin landed on top, his forearm pressing down on his opponent's windpipe. Yield, Miller! The Miller tried to laugh again, gasping as his round face turned purple. You win! Get off, you daft bastard! Robin jumped up and spread his arms charismatically, grinning as he looked around at the cheering spectators. The winner of this bout, Robin Hood! The adjudicator raised Robin's arm as the people of the village shouted and laughed in congratulations. The big miller, Thomas, smiled through gritted teeth, slapping his young opponent on the back much harder than was needed. You did well, lad. You've a natural gift for fighting. Maybe one day I'll test you properly. Better watch that temper, though. He walked off, grimacing at his opponent, as the older village men mocked him cheerfully over his defeat. Robin Hood, or Robin as everyone knew him, was tall, and, even at just seventeen years old, had incredible upper body strength, with enormous arms and shoulder muscles, thanks to his training with the longbow since childhood. His honest brown eyes and easy smile made him a popular character in the small village of Wakefield. "'You did it!' Robin's friend Much slapped him on the back, a broad smile on his open face. "'I never thought you'd be able to beat my da. He's as strong as an ox!' It was a fine spring day. The trees just about filled out with their green covering again, and the May games were well under way. Everyone in the village was dancing, singing, competing in something or other, or simply enjoying the ale and meat the local Lord Thomas, Earl of Lancaster, had provided. The sounds of revelry and smells of food cooking filled the air, as the few skinny local dogs that hadn't been eaten during the recent hard winters mooched around, hoping to find some scraps on the ground. Robin grasped Much's arm, laughing as he looked at his friend. You're right. I never thought I'd beat him either. One good punch, and he'd have had me. His arms are like tree trunks. He shook his head sheepishly. I panicked when he almost got me. That's why I just threw myself on him. Despite his modesty, Robin had the speed, agility, and quick thinking to make him more than a match for most of the men in Wakefield. Aye, that was a wild move. My da wasn't expecting it. Don't think anyone was. Let's go and get a drink. Much dragged Robin along, and they headed for the ale cellars. Look, the May Queen's coming. Robin looked up eagerly. They both knew who would be queen this year. Matilda, daughter of Henry the Fletcher. Robin thought she must be the loveliest girl in all of England, and hoped one day not too far off to make her his wife. They had lain together occasionally over the past year, and promised themselves to each other, but Robin hadn't worked up the courage to ask of her her hand yet. For all his swagger, he was still rather a shy young man, not entirely confident in himself. Matilda appeared, walking slowly towards the village green, smiling happily. She wore a plain white dress, which accentuated her slim figure, a garland of colourful spring flowers in her strawberry blonde hair, and, when her gaze rested on Robin for a second or two, he felt a small thrill run through him. She was followed by a great black bull, led by three jacks in the green, village men in dark brown cloaks, with ornate leaf masks covering their faces. The sword dance began as the small procession reached the centre of the village. Swords were laid on the ground in a six-pointed star shape. Then the villagers, Matilda included, laughed and whooped as they spun around the steel hexagram, holding hands and swapping partners.